Welcome to the Great American Collectibles Show, seen Wednesdays on the Sports Collectors Daily Facebook page and the Great American Collectibles Facebook page. You can also listen to us on iHeartRadio, Pandora, and Spotify. The Great American Collectibles Show is brought to you by the National Sports Collectors Convention and Sports Collectors Daily. Tonight's headlines are brought to you by Sports Collectors Daily. For all of your hobby news, features, and more, go to sportscollectorsdaily.com. And now your hosts, Tom Zappala and Boston sports personality, John Mallory. You know, J.M., when they call you a Boston sports personality, yeah, um, I think that's under, under, what's the word? It's, uh, it doesn't do me justice. Correct. Right. I am a, I do work in Boston sports, and I do have a personality, you know, despite the, what you see on this show. Well, the, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the thing is... I do a lot of multi... So it's a good, but, it's a but, good overriding but, correct, description, I, yeah. when you but it doing, doesn't get into the real guts of my talent. When you were doing the, uh, <laughs> the, the, uh, the, the piece for the... Uh, on the media for the... Uh, I write Barrett Sports Media. No, 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 no. When oh, Media sh- Blitz back in the day. Yeah. yeah. For, who's that, for the Herald? I syndicated Herald, nah, the uh, Providence Journal, right. uh, Boston and Metro. That's when you yeah. pretty much burned all your bridges, right? Uh, yes. That's why I cannot get any other job except this one. <laughs> so, yes. See, he used to... Ch- uh, and, uh, welcome, yes. Charlie. Charlie Perino. I picked the wrong people to insult. <laughs> exactly. Consistently, Charlie. I mean, I, 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 would, I, mean, I jumped on. on the wrong wrong bandwagon for about a decade. <laughs> Paul Borges from PB Collectibles, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Charlie Perino from JRI Cards. I'm Tom Zappler, my good friend. John Mallory. Rico is pots on. No, I don't know where the hell Rico is today. <laughs> he's golfing but or he's listen, signing we have, something. Listen, we have a good show. We're going to be all over the place today. Now, by the way, we have Al Christofoli from Love of the Game coming in later This is an action-packed show. I'm so it happy is. to have Pete first, here in studio with first, us. First, Unbelievable. our headline. Yeah. Now, this one here, this, this is close to my heart. Okay. And I'll tell you why. As there's long back, as you're happy. There's that's, a backstory. That's story. what we all care about. Last Monday, night, when, last Monday night's went over the Green Bay Packer. Packers, Tommy DeVito's cards all went to another level. In the month, over eighteen thousand dollars worth of a few what few DeVito cards have been produced have sold on eBay alone. The average sold price for one of his cards during the first week of the NFL regular season was fifty-five cents. This week, it's twenty-seven dollars and twenty-seven cents. As eBay dealers dug through their boxes to find the card, last Tuesday a Autograph parallel from Sage sold for three hundred and twenty-four dollars. Most of his other kinds, ki- uh, most of his other cards have climbed to around one hundred twenty-five bucks a piece. Twenty have sold for way more than hundred bucks. Now, this past Sunday, when Tommy Boy they came lost. down, they lost to earth. His cards are crashing like Mac Jones's did. Oof. But now the backstory. His agent. Sean. Sean Stellato. Local guy. Sean and I go back 15 years. Sean and I were on uh, the uh, board of the Italian-American Sports Hall of Fame for four years together. Just got inducted into the national. Right. Now, I'm trying to put this as nicely as I can. Oh, man. He's a clown. I knew this wasn't going to go well. (laughs) He is a clown. Really? Really? A clown. I wrote. I wrote a story on him for Patriots Football Weekly. A few I'm years telling ago. you right now. Now, you, re- you heard. I've what, had a good relationship. You heard what happened with the Italian restaurant? Yeah, they raised. He raised his he's, price. He's, that's Sean. doubled his price for Sean. An now, Sean and I. Sean, he wrote a book. No backing down about his experiences as a Salem Mass High School football player. Now, do you know that you probably don't know this? I have a signed he, copy of the but book. But he asked Tom and Ellen, and J M. To write the book for him. Oh, really? Was it really? He did? He did. Mm. And I said, well, sure, it's going to cost you. He said, well, let's do a trade. <laughs> what was he going to trade? I said, what the hell are you going to trade for trading? us to do your book? Yeah. Never got around to that. Um, One last story about I him. wonder who he got to write it. I don't know. It wasn't me. One made. last story about Sean. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's got a great niche for himself, Paul and Charlie. He reps about nine NFL players. They're all second and third tier players. They're like DeVito, late G- round guys, picks. Yeah, late that round are making picks, 800000 yeah. and he gets 10%, so he's making some good money. Yeah. You know who his first, 
his very first uh, uh, signee was. No. Ellen and I, uh, we, we, had, we were hosting a, not hosting, with the organization, we were having a, a, a night, a fundraiser at the Burroughs, right here. Sean walks in <laughs> with Jonas Gray. Oh, yeah, Jonas Gray. Now, Jonas Gray That's played for right. the Patriots, ran for 250 yards, and two weeks later, they cut him. He they, was like late for practice or yeah, something. Yeah, and they a week cut him. Later. And he yeah. never resurfaced. Yeah. He was Sean's very That's right. first. Yeah, that one game against the Colts. Right. Yeah. And the way he dresses, the original Sean Stellato, we're looking at him with, <laughs> with the hat. <laughs> right there. I like it. It's Charlie Perino. So, Charlie, you really, I, he's copying you. That's, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, and are you calling him a clown because he wears the hat? No, <laughs> no, no. Uh, because he's a clown. He's just a clown. That's what but he that's is. his job to make money for his client, right? I mean, you don't screw. That's his other, job. You don't screw people. He's got to make it while it's hot. Who long? Who knows how long this kid's gonna last? See, you know what's happening here? He's defending the article that he wrote. <laughs> no, the article was very well written. Oh, I'm sure it was. <laughs> but, I, yeah. uh, one other thing, uh, as I, I'm going to mention this every week on March second, we are doing a fundraiser. That's Rico right. and I, JM may even join us, and Charlie will be there. Uh, for Little Smiles in Florida. Uh, we're going to be raising money for kids who are ill, homeless, uh, and face tragedy or have experienced uh, all kinds of bad things. Um, if you'd like to make a donation, please, I'm uh, asking you to, to do it. Just go to littlesmilesfl.org. And we're going to be posting it as time goes on. littlesmilesfl.org. Dot org, even if you donate 10 bucks, that's all yeah, we're asking. Yeah, whatever you can, absolutely. Uh, we're going to have, an, if you're going to be there at the event in Florida, we're going to have an Listen, auction. you get 100 people donate 10 bucks, that's what? 50, 1,500 bucks? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Austin Prep. <laughs> uh, anyway, make a long story short. I hope you donate. We're going to have a silent auction and a, a really cool auction at the site. Uh, so we're going to be talking about it. All right, let's get to Charlie. Let's get to uh, Paul. Um, Charlie, first of all, how's business? How are you guys doing? Business is still very, very good. Uh, we haven't really missed the beat. We keep introducing new products, and we're very uh, on the cutting edge. Like when DeVito comes around, uh, I'm going to be giving away some free packs. His autograph is only worth a couple of hundred, but the popularity is there. They did lose last week. They're not going to win every week. The Giants are still I love the kid, by the way. I love the kid. Tommy. He, went to, he went to Illinois and Syracuse. It's like, a good story. It's a good story. It is. Yeah. It's a very, he, I love the Listen, it could be more than a good story because Danny Jones, they gave him the big money, but who knows? Uh, who I, knows? You don't right? know. I like you don't the know. You don't think so, yeah. Paul? I, I don't, you don't know, but I was very, I'm a big Vikings fan, unfortunately, and uh, <laughs> I was very happy with his performance against the Pack. Very and very surprised. Yeah, actually, he, yeah. he, he was. It's but, just the storyline. We saw Jeremy Lin when he was with the Knicks. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right. That's right. The Eagle movie, uh, Vince Papial, his cards were worth a nickel and they went up. So yeah. you get those little spikes when the masses go after a certain personality. Absolutely. Like John's a personality. I'm waiting for him to tap dance. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. That's the second segment. I'll tell you what. I do not I do not agree with his mother's uh, chicken cutlet recipe at all. That's all I'm saying. You don't like the, a, the pink vodka sauce? A, as that's a not, Sicilian, oh, man, yeah, you don't, don't use pink <laughs> vodka sauce yeah. on a chicken cutlet. And she also throws a little sugar in the uh, in, in the uh, the sauce the, no the olive oil she, oh. Oh. what the hell kind of a recipe is that you have a problem with the whole DeVito situation I like Tommy DeVito <laughs> I like Tommy DeVito I'm not crazy about Sean Stallone. Not crazy about him. <laughs> Pretty more than, more than I'm not that. crazy about him. <laughs> <laughs> you had to get that book deal going again. Yeah, right. Maybe he's been some cutlets. I would have loved him. If so he we could have written that book? Exactly. Damn it. He asked us to. <laughs> I never even brought it to your attention. You never did. Because it was a no deal. Because it didn't happen. It was right? a non-deal. Anyway. Well, you know I would have done it for nothing. I, I, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, we have to talk about it, but, you know, the DeVito thing, we're, it's getting a little too much, especially from the Italian side. We're seeing uh, the front page of the post yesterday. Was it really? Me DeVito laid out and it said whack across the headline. Like he got like a mob hit or something. Oh, uh, yeah. See, yeah. That's, that's, that's borderline. Yeah, that's, yeah. See, I don't like that. Social that's media cool. just blew the whole I, thing. I agree. Agree. Where, and this thing, they're doing this thing now is like yeah, a thing yeah. now. Yeah, My yeah. mother used to do that. They got, oh, that, it happened. They do it. Used to do it all but the now time. they got T-shirts with this. I with know. The father and everything. Yeah. Uh, with them, we'll do that. And we got, we're giving away Taylor Swift cards because of the Kelsey thing. There's a card. They're, they're novelty <laughs> cards. You know, you know, Taylor Swift and Kelsey. I like her. Yeah. She's classy. 
She's a clown. She's no, I'm just kidding. She's very talented. She's a very talented. She's very what talented. Is, she's extremely talented. She's very we talented. Let's ask Chrissy. For free if you pull Kelsey's uh, uh, card. Chrissy, you're an entertainer. What do yeah. you think about uh, Taylor Swift? Yeah, she does a good job. See, that's a, there's a rave. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's oh, like overwhelming. There's a rave. Uh, yeah, she's, she's good at what she does. Yeah, very she good. Very good. Very good. Yeah. That's, yeah, a, very that's good. a second rave. Charlie, what about the shot packs? What's this all about, shot packs? Shot packs, well, you know, we do our, some blaster box breaks, and we have all our vintage products from the 50s, 60s, 70s. They're all authenticated and encapsulated, so they stay in there until every spot in the card sells out. When it sells out, it could be a day, it could be a week. Sometimes it could take 30 days, like we had a 59 baseball. It's not for everybody, and it's pricey, but when it sells out, we open it. So it could be anywhere from a day to two months for us to get to that. A shot pack is like when you go to the bar and you just want to do a shot. Yeah. It's one pack from a sealed box from 1996, Kobe Bryant's rookie year. Yeah. 93, uh, Derek Jeter's rookie year. Uh, 2000, we pulled a lot of Tom Brady. There's about 40 different boxes that may contain Tom Brady's rookie card. Michigan, sweatpants, yeah. practice jersey. Hmm. So you buy a shot pack and we open it that night. Uh, it won't be that exact time, uh, like if it's 8 o'clock. But we have a lot of our regulars that come in around 9, 30, 10 o'clock, and they'll just start buying three or four shot packs and look for Brady, look for uh, LeBron James, Steph Curry, Kobe Bryant, Jeter, Otani now. We've got a lot of 2018 packs. Uh, Ron Acuna, you name it. Uh, even down to anything of any GOAT potential. Mostly alive. Some are still playing, which is good and bad in case they get hurt. Uh, they fall out of favor. Uh, we have 20, 2007, Kevin Durant, 2009's Curry. Uh, baseball is mostly Jeter, A-Rod in these shot packs. And you buy the pack. We go through the cards one at a time. And you look for that hit, the autograph, the refractor, anything it may be. We got into Kelsey 2013. So you buy a pack there. And we say, if you pull Kelsey, not only are you happy, it's his rookie card. Maybe it's his autograph worth a couple thousand. But we'll give you a Taylor Swift card. And the customer at that point, if he's watching, will either ship it to him or will shred it live on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> so, or creates a little more. Wow. Uh, That's a little strong. It's like a smaller version I, of the death to I, disco I, thing at, Rig at uh, Comiskey Park. Right? Yeah. 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 I, I have a question for you, Charlie. Do you find that the uh, unopened stuff like the, on the vintage side is drying up? There's not a lot of it out there. What do you what do you see? Boy, that's, we can talk several hours about that. We, we, there isn't a lot out there, but there is a lot out there. And don't forget, even if somebody has a lot, nobody sells the stuff. We all know it's a hoarding business. I hoard. I'm running out of room. It's like a going through a gauntlet through my apartment with all the cards. There's a lot out there. You got to wait for that person to sell it and make yep. sure it's a good price. But yeah, it is drying up. 50s, 60s. Now I'm seeing a lot of amazing. early 70s baseball. Maybe a 20 a year would pop up. Maybe there's only 10. But at any given moment, a collector needs to cash out or grandpa dies and the kid gets the, all the packs and they call up Heritage, REA, they call them up and then bang, I'm getting a catalog going, where did all these come from? You it's know, crazy. It's, Charlie, do you have a bid on those, uh, like at those auctions? Do you have a oh, bid? Oh, yeah. Almost oh, you do. every auction, which makes, that, that, that's the backside of the uh, whole story. The whole, all these auctions... There's so many of them. Right. They used to, remember a couple of years ago, it was like three or four every quarter. Now they got quarterlies, monthlies. monthlies and yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. So I'm constantly getting emails and I've been outbid. And I remember I was an REA. You had REA on before, Robert Edwards. And yeah. their auctions go to two, three in the morning right. on a Sunday because it's that extended bidding. But right. There's a lot out there and you got to wait for it. I told our customers too, whatever a 10 is worth, you can't pick up the phone and buy a 10 until someone's willing to sell it. Yeah. So it's Charlie, not like you can pick up the phone. You can buy a Ferrari or a Rolls Royce. Yeah. But try to find a 10 right. of a certain card. It's not until one of you guys have it and you want to sell it at the price that we can meet. Good so point. we're trying to pull them live. Charlie, I don't know if you're a fan of this guy, but he certainly has broken through in, in the national media. And I kind of compare what you do to him, and that, that's Pat McAfee. You're kind of like the Pat McAfee of the collectibles world right now because you, you, you bring entertainment into what you do. You have a cast of characters. You're just going about it differently. You're just like, you're like the hobby on amphetamines, you know, the way you do your show. <laughs> Can you just talk about your show, what you do, how you do it, and why you chose to approach it 
this way, which is different from anyone else doing it right now. John, that's a great point and a great question. I, I thank you for all the compliments, but our show is like a variety show. If we had a bigger stage, we may be moving in a year or two to a bigger stage, but we won't, we have a lot of sound bites. We have a lot of antics when certain players are pulled, we'll play their song. Uh, well, I can't think of it. We have all the sound bites when Derek Jeter comes to the plate. We have the Michael Jordan announcer calling him. So whenever a card's pulled, uh, boy, I can't, I got the soundboard's not in front of me. Uh, <laughs> Ozzy Smith, we play an Ozzy Osbourne song. So every player gets yeah. tagged with a nice sound bite to it. We have girls, uh, dollar girls, we call them, which are very popular. Two reasons. Gives the show host a break because our shows go about, I was out there five and a half hours last night. Wow. wow. You hear my voice. Wow. <laughs> it's yeah. going a little raspy. Yeah. But the girls will go out there and it's cute because they'll talk about, the player, they'll mispronounce the name, and they'll do specials. So it's almost like a variety show. We got horns, bells, and whistles, <laughs> and it's fun. We try to make it fun and engaging, yeah. whether you're in the pack or not, people want to say it. Charlie, do you have a producer? Do you have, who produces the show? Who does, you know, who's, who, is it you? or like <laughs> all, does, yeah. Yeah. You do all of that, huh? Yeah, it's, you know, I grew up like a Italian. D. Martin was my favorite, and I see his variety shows. I don't sing. But we try to incorporate <laughs> jokes, dollar girls, uh, great packs, Good specials you, through the night. We Mitch. have a wheel on Tuesday. We give away free packs, uh, free graded cards we give away. Last night was a – usually Mondays are our slab nights. We give away a free graded card Very and a mystery cool. envelope. So we do a lot of little extra things in there. By the way, a uh, little later on, Paul uh, – you did bring some of your... Yeah, a couple things. A yeah. couple of your, your cards yeah. that we're going to take a look at. Some beautiful yeah. stuff, man. Yeah. Beautiful stuff. Yeah. We are chatting with Charlie Perino from JRI Cards. Paul Borges is in the house with us. Paul uh, is, uh, has been gracious enough to uh, sponsor another Gax moment. Nice. That I yes. do. Nice. You know, <laughs> just wanted you to know that I do that. You do. And you do it well. Thank you. Sometimes. <laughs> uh, should we take a break? No. <laughs> yeah, let's take a break. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. You know, when Chrissy gives me that look, it's the same look that Ellen gives me. Like, yeah. when I leave my dirty socks on the floor next to the bed. <laughs> just want you to know that. Hang in there. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Rico Petroselli. Right now, thousands of children are facing the most difficult times in their lives with serious illness, homelessness, and other tragedies. I hope that you can join us on March 2nd at the County Line Restaurant in Juno Beach, Florida for a live auction and some great baseball talk. If you can't join us, please consider a donation to littlesmilesfl.org. That's littlesmilesfl.org to help these kids. And when you donate, please mention the Great American Collectibles Show. We hope you'll help. Since 1996, Brian Drent and the staff at Denver's Mile High Card Company have led the charge in the collectibles hobby. Mile High is a full-service dealer specializing in buying and selling cards and offers a competitive consignment program for all collectors. Whether it be their computerized want list service, appraisals, or auction services, Mile High has it all. If you've been searching for a company with a selection of high-grade vintage 1888 to 1970 baseball cards and memorabilia that shares your passion, aim high, mile high. Go to milehighcardco.com or call 303-840-2784 for more information. This is Brian Drent, president of Mile High Card Company. Is your sports card and memorabilia collection properly insured? For easily replaced personal property, homeowner's insurance is all most people need. But for prized possessions that you may have spent a lifetime collecting, it doesn't go nearly far enough. Collectibles Insurance Services has been insuring for over 50 years. They offer a full range of protection and a $0 deductible at an affordable rate with no appraisals required. I know because they insure my collection. If you have a minute, go to collectinsure.com and learn more about insuring your personal card or memorabilia collection. Hi, this is Dan from Memory Lane Auctions here to remind you that the renowned Memory Lane Collectibles Company has served as a beacon of light to the collecting community for the past several decades. Indeed, folks, it has been our utmost privilege and pleasure to provide the most enthusiastic collectors with an abundance of the finest sports cards and memorabilia 
for America's most coveted sports personalities via our world-class auctions. Whether you choose either a private sale transaction or the auction route, Memory Lane cordially invites you to reach out to us to maximize the value of your prized possessions. Also, it is not just sales that we pride ourselves on being the best of the rest, because if you are seeking a particular keepsake for your esteemed gathering, we will be relentless in our quest to find that special piece to fulfill your collecting dreams. So no time to wait. Reach out to us today for the purposes of capitalizing on our unparalleled marketing capabilities. Simply pick up the phone and dial 877-606-5263. That's 877-606-LANE or find us on the World Wide Web at www.memorylaneinc.com. Now is the time for your valued consignment to ultimately become another one of Memory Lane's record-setting prices. How would you like to own the bat that was used by your favorite player when he hit that towering home run or game-winning base hit? Now look no further than JT Sports, specializing in the sale and authentication of professional game-used bats. As the official authenticators of professional model game used bats for PSA DNA, JT Sports will guarantee the authenticity of any bat purchased from them. JT Sports also buys and sells game-worn uniforms, gloves, and baseball equipment. The unique quality of the collectible is what JT Sports is all about. Give them a call at 609-487-8003 or check them out at GameUseBats.com. Welcome to another Gax Moment brought to us by our good friend Paul Borges and PB Collectibles, your neighborhood card shop. Go to pbcollectibles.com to find that special card or piece of memorabilia. This week, I want to talk about a card that I purchased uh, a few months ago that, in my opinion, uh, is one of those cards that you hold on to. It's a keeper for any collection as well as a good investment. Dating back to 1947, this Bond-bred Jackie Robinson card really is his true rookie card. I'm holding one up here. Uh, it's not the one that you're looking at the image. This is the card I bought. But I absolutely love this card. Uh, not, not to take anything away from the 1948 Leaf. Uh, it's a beautiful card. It was distributed in 1947. The Leaf card is a 1948, as we all know. This was part of the 13-card set put out by Bond Bread featuring Jackie Robinson. Now, keep in mind that growing up in Massachusetts, I was partial to Wonder Bread. Both Bond and Wonder were those breads that you could keep for years because you didn't know what the ingredients were. They never seemed to get stale. The entire Bond set was issued over a period of years, but the Jackie card was the first card released in 1947 and given out by store owners with free slices of bread. It was Bond's attempt to promote its product among, among African-American consumers, according to our good friends at Saba, who did a lot of research on this. The rest of the set were most probably distributed after 1947. In any event, the 47 Bond Bread exhibit of Jackie uh, with the facsimile autograph has become an extremely desirable card. See if you can grab one in a lower mid-grade. You can't go wrong. And that's another Gax moment. That's a great card, that Bond Bread card. It's, yep. it's a really good card. And, yeah. and, and uh, there's some other good cards in that 47 Bond Bread. I have the rounded corners yeah. the set. And, and Yogi Berra's rookies in there as well. Absolute. Stan Musial's yep. in there. Yep. It's a very undervalued. Yeah, and, and that 13 card set of Jackie, there's some great images too. Yes, there great are. Images. We yeah. should, um, it's a good card. We should start giving out slices of bread, I think, as prizes Wonder on the bread. show. Emily and if, like, if a card is really hot, we'll give them toast. Well, remember oh, Wonder Bread. Wonder Bread, great. you could use that as joint creative, thing, right? Very we give creative. toast. You remember Wonder yeah. Bread? Yes, yeah. I remember Wonder Bread. I mean, you could use that. You could soak it and use it as joint compound. I just had, for breakfast, I just had a grilled cheese and Wonder Bread. You know it still my... exists, right? I know it does, but it's just... You ever heard of it? This amazing <laughs> thing. It's in the aisle when you walk down the well, bread. Well, isn't Wonder Bread... This is Wait the part second. of the show where Chrissy finally snaps. Wait a second. And has to say something. Did you have Wonder Bread? <laughs> 
Did you <laughs> have? Didn't we discuss this in Rico did like you, a week ago? Did you have Wonder Bread in Australia? It was, no. It was, it was close when you went to break two minutes before you were supposed a, to. A I saw her, but I knew she was going to snap. Is it? <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't Wonder Bread bread a, like a, a Merrimack Valley? That's where it originated. Is it like a local thing? Yes, but I, it's still around. Well, I don't eat it. I don't. Know. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you don't Isn't eat it. Isn't it the white one with the polka dots on the packet? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it the is. most unhealthy thing you can I eat. I heard of it when I lived in another country, <laughs> so I don't think it's as rare as you think it is. Do you ever eat it? No, we don't sell it over there, but even no, I no, have here. heard of it. Do you ever have it here? No. Did you, have, did you ever win a slice anywhere? <laughs> Did you ever get a slice of bread as a, as a prize? If it was really hot, hard, it'd be toasted. Paul. It's like the worst contest ever. Here's what you win. Charlie. A piece of bread? <laughs> Here's Charlie. a slice of bread. Wonder Bread was a local <laughs> bread, and you, the, the best Wonder Bread sandwich was a fluffinutter. Oh, yeah. yeah. Marshmallow fluff, peanut butter. Peanut butter. Right? Smack it together, definitely. Awesome. And I put jelly, too. A, Sometimes I put as jelly. As a child growing up, if you didn't have a fluffernutter or peanut butter and jelly on that beautiful Wonder Bread with a nice cold bottle of Yoo-Hoo, you didn't <laughs> yeah. have a childhood. The, oh, thing yeah. with, the thing with the fluffernutter, though, was... You couldn't, you couldn't spread it. The thing with the fluffernutter I, was my mother used to put the fluff and kept it in the fridge. No. And you couldn't spread Why the dick. You couldn't. You'd break the bread. It would, like, would. rip the bread. Right, it would yeah. disintegrate. So it was like the worst looking right. sandwich ever. Mind you, I ate it. But it was the worst looking sandwich That's ever. because you were having it on Wonder Bread. Right. It was like having on a tissue paper. That's awful. I mean, it, it was, was terrible. absolutely. All right, awful. let's get back to Charlie Perino. And Wait, Paul no, no, Butcher. no more bread talk. No, no more bread talk. <laughs> All right, Charlie. There are so many different avenues that uh, that so, someone that goes onto your site can go down. Talk about a membership and exactly how the whole process works. Because there's a, you have so many different things you offer. Yeah. You know I've never seen is? your site. Sites, I'm looking at it. It's like Disneyland. It is. You yeah. Disneyland, you don't know which ride to go to, where to go, where to be. <laughs> exactly. Certain things fell out. Uh, it's ex fun and exciting from shop packs to the graded uh, and unsearched seal. Those are the, I love those. I mean, the more mo mid modern packs are fun, but so many different avenues, so many different options for customers. Uh, we have a spectacle pack up there, 79 OP with Gretzky on the back. Uh -oh. At the card in a tens worth about a million to two million. So we broadened it more. There's over a thousand nine hundred and seventy-nine spots, nineteen seventy-nine we did. Um, so we have different level prices of cards depending on who you're gonna pull. But we also have the membership program, which I think is a great thing. It's thirty-nine ninety-nine a month, and you make a couple purchases. We scratch your head too, like what are we doing? Like, why is this membership so good? I, I say it on the air. We have reward points if you make a purchase. And you guys make a purchase, you get points. Similar like Starbucks or any other loyalty program. But the membership will give you double the reward points. If you buy three spots or three packs of the same item, you get additional 5% off. And if you do a little math right there, you're automatically ahead for the month uh, if you're a progressive buyer. We do free grading services. I didn't discuss that. If we pull that Jordan or Tom Brady out of a pack fresh uh, poll, We'll grade it for free, PSA, back at SGC. So as a member, you get more limited, uh, unlimited grading services on there. And the big kicker is every week, just for our members, if you spend $100, you'll get entered into a giveaway, which could be a box, a pack, a bunch of cards. So right there, you, it's only about 8 to 10 people. We have a lot of members, but we try to get the people who are paying attention to jump on it. And then we have a little Facebook group also that we invite collectors in there, which is most like a lot of other Facebook groups, but people can ask questions because everybody that buys from us are really good, solid collectors. They've been collecting for a while. They're not dumb. They, they know what's out there. They know what's good. Charlie, what's, what's trending now? What are you seeing as pop popular with the people that are going on your site? Um, you know, whether it's type of cards, players, you know, unopened packs, sports. What, what's, what's hot right now in terms Boy, of what you're seeing? The big ones are like the Bird Magic 8081 packs. Okay. Uh, yeah. 880 was the, the Dr. Ju uh, Julius Serving in the middle. They didn't get a full card, which yeah. is crazy. Right. 81, I noticed that pack about four or five years ago. It was the first year of Bird and Magic yeah. on the entire card. And card. a bird was, a 10 was selling for a couple of thousand. This is about five years ago. I'm like, why is Larry Bird's first full-size card only 2,000? It did shoot up. Let's go to the COVID spike, about 40, 50. But it's holding around 20, yep. 25,000 for that green windbreaker. Yep. Larry Bird with that big head just sitting there. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, a bird, Magic, Jordan, Jeter. A-Rod still has a little bit of a following. 
Trout fell off a little bit because I don't think he wants to win a World Series. Otani went crazy. You guys know that. Right. Uh, Jordan's always popular. Our core audience is in probably in their 30s. They grew up watching jo- Michael Jordan and his cards, even though they're seem to be in abundance, but there's more people chasing Jordan than there are cards. There used to be a lot of cards and that many people chasing them. Now there's a lot more people and nobody's flipping them. They put them away. They'll give them to their kids. And Jordan's popular. Let me see. LeBron's picking up a little bit of steam. Tom Brady, again, in our lifetime, our kids and kids' kids, I don't think anybody's going to win seven Super Bowls again. Yeah, It's a feat that we're going to appreciate more as time goes on. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Is, is LeBron James, do you think there's going to be another spike back? It seems, I mean, he's yes. considered the GOAT with Jordan, right? And yet, his stuff has dropped uh, LeBron's. Do you think that there'll be an increase? I think there will be. The kicker with him is when his son comes in. He's yeah. hanging around and working <clears> out. <throat> when his son comes in, these card companies are going to have the father and son card. Yeah, that's They're going to be on the time. same team if he can wing it. And... I, He's the all-time leading scorer in every game he plays. He's furthering himself from Jabbar. Yeah. He just broke his hip, I heard, by the way. Yes, he uh, did. You know, you guys, you guys, LeBron. you're leading me into a question I had. I wanted to get all your views on it, including you, Zap. Um, you know, we talk about sort of the big four, the, you know, the, the Ruths, the Gehrigs, the Cobbs, Honus Wagner, whatever. Is a guy like Brady, is LeBron, I'm trying to think of who else, you know, we could put in that. Uh, are they going to be part of the the big whatever 20 years from now are those types of guys do they have the the juice to get up where the babe ruths and and the mickey mantles think, are Paul? in the hobby I, I don't know that they'll get that high but yeah. i think they're gonna be a, a good card i mean you know like you see like the bill russell the 57 russell um that had spiked pretty good now it's 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 kind of plateaued a little I, I agree bit with you. Um, but I don't think it'll ever reach. Well, I think part of the reason is there's so many. There's so many of them. Yeah. That's the reason. Yeah. yeah. Paul, I want to switch gears for a few minutes uh, uh, with uh, with Paul. Paul, um, you're in Newport, Rhode Island. Yep. You're in you're in the rich section of uh, Newport, yep. right? So uh, my question is: Is there a slum in Newport? No, there is. There is. is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There really Come is. On, <laughs> what's, uh, what's the bad section in Newport? You know, we, we always <laughs> refer to you as a neighborhood store, and that's literally yep. what you are. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the store in in uh, Newport. So, so we're in Newport, Rhode Island, and we're re- located across from the historic St. Mary's Church, which is where JFK got married, um, and Jackie, and uh, so it's a good landmark for people. The <coughs> shop is extremely uh, tiny uh, shop, but it is a shop that predominantly once um, Memorial Day hits to Labor Day, we're, we're very busy. The winter time in Newport seems to die a little bit, and, and that's a good time. I told you that I teach at, at a local university, yep. and it's also a good time for me to travel around to go look at different collections and so forth. Um, but it's still pretty steady. Uh, and uh, it's been really good. I want to ask both of you guys this question. You first, Paul. What direction? <clears throat> are you happy with the direction the hobby's going in? I, I like the direction of the hobby, and I don't. And I think one of the big things, I think, is um, there's just so much of the newer stuff that's out there. It feels like it's been a little bit diluted by flooding the market with with product um, from that standpoint. But it's certainly still good. I think that uh, I try to, in my case, at my shop, I'm more of a card guy, people coming in to buy particular cards. Um, I sell mostly in my shop from the wax side. I'm a retail guy. I have some hobby stuff, but uh, for me, I'd rather have the cards because that's the clientele <laughs> that I'm getting. Um, but... Uh, I, I still enjoy it very much. So uh, I am a hobbyist at heart, turned it into a business type of thing. Been doing shows for about 40 years. So, Charlie, what about you? Well, there's probably, I, I agree, uh, there's probably <coughs> 10 or 15 good things that are happening in the hobby, 15 or 10 bad things that are happening, and there's new things that are happening. I know the fanatics and the whole lawsuits are going to disrupt everything because they'll fight in courts till the lawyer's all become the richest guys in the world. Right. Uh, but I like the more vintage product. Uh, 
when you look at a set like 75, there's only one George Brett card in that set. There's not a numbered card. There's not a piece of his uniform. There's not a prism refractor, right. or shimmer, whatever they, you know, all the fun things that are popular today. There's that one card and it's that card. I and mean, there's one shot of Nolan Ryan uh, or Johnny Bench with the hat backwards in his rookie year. Those are the cards they don't make anymore. They're tough to find. Nobody kept them in good condition back when we pulled them 10, 15, 30 years ago. It's, if they're even, if they haven't disintegrated by now. It's, it's those will always be popular. People buy those. They're not flipping them. They're keeping them. Yeah. And they're just putting them away. It's the favorite player, team, era, the it, year they were born, anything along that. It's, it's tough to track all the stuff that comes in from, uh, I've got a one of one of this, a one of one of that, or a oh, one yeah, out of yeah. 10, a one out of 25. It's like, where is this headed? Where is it going? And I know it creates excitement and a buzz for the younger, but it's like... I don't know. I see a lot of kids coming to me at shows or coming into my shop, and they're um, looking to trade their modern stuff, these one of ones, for vintage. And I, I, for me, I, I, I'm not that guy for that stuff. You know, sometimes to, to bo both of you and and JM, we've talked about this ad nauseum. That uh, I'm I'm kind of glad when I'm seeing with the modern market kind of coming back to earth. Because, and then we use the word influencer, but a lot of these young kids have been listening to some of these clowns on the internet recommending that they buy this, uh, uh, I don't know, Frank Smith, one of one prism with the green background, blah, 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 blah. And I don't think they realize that in a lot of cases that influencer is on somebody's payroll pushing that card. And it, it's really, I find it frustrating. There's two kinds of collectors. There's the collector that is, has a passion. Sure. They, they're not looking to buy something so I can sell it tomorrow, next week, or, or put it out there. Those are the co true collectors that have always been around. A lot of, like I said, the influencers, the flippers came in. And no one knows what anything is worth. It's worth exactly. what someone's willing to pay for. It. Exactly. But why are you selling it if that's your favorite player? Or if it's not, then you got to go down that rabbit hole and try to figure out if it's like, say, I hate the Red Sox and I pull a, a nice Red Sox player, maybe I don't want that card. Right. I can trade it like we used to when we were little, or then you flip it. You know, there's J one guy, JM, that's he's got a half a million followers. He's had millions of views. I'm not going to mention his name because I don't want to get sued. Right. But <laughs> the point being is that everybody listens to this guy and you do a little digging and, you know, he's, he's working with some of the big card manufacturers. Yeah. I mean, it's the, it's the, it's the atmosphere in which we live, though, right? I mean, I'm not making excuses for them. <clears throat> but they're going to do what they have to do to make money. And like, like Charlie's saying, some people are in this business strictly for the money. There's no passion. There's no background. You know, all of us here, we want to make money in what we're doing, too. But we started as collectors. We started with, with the love of the game. You guys are living in that world. In two very different worlds, by the way. You're online, taking advantage of technology and everything. You're an old-school neighborhood card shop. But you both have that that fun kind of atmosphere. See when come, someone come in the shop yep. find, getting a card they like, doing a break and having someone find a great card like that. Can you just talk about that a little bit? Because you guys are in very different worlds, but you're kind of doing the same thing, which I think is bringing back the basis of the business. Charlie, Charlie oh, you first, could go. Yeah, we, our thing in the beginning was make card collecting fun and great again. We yeah. Get our allowance, go buy a pack, sit under the tree, eat the gum, right. and trade cards amongst <laughs> ourselves. We weren't like... What is what is uh, Reggie Jackson worth? What is uh, Roger, uh, not Roger Clem, uh Mark the Bird Fidrich when he was off oh, oh, the, the bird, bird. Yeah, yeah. And the bird. I saw a picture. Of that, so I thought, <laughs> we weren't guessing how much they were. I was trying to collect the study Yankees. Sure. I grew up as a Yankee fan. Yeah. Uh, Phil Liliano went to my high school. I tried to find his card. Franco, Ken Stabler. As a kid, and I say this is a good, my one good point is as a child growing up. We didn't have cable or internet or TV. That's we right. We didn't really see. I couldn't follow my uh, Raiders that closely with Stabler and Madden. Yeah. The only way I could enjoy was Sports Illustrated or a card encapsulated showing that player. And that's the only way I could get them. We couldn't Google a player and see right. images and photos like right. we do today. So our love back when we were little were that cardboard was the closest we can get to that player holding him in our hands or waiting for... The Sporting Digest, what about the Sporting News, Sports Illustrated, the Weekly Magazine to come out, which gave you scores from 
two weeks ago. <laughs> it, it, it's it's so true though because I think and my shop used to be a barber shop, so it would be a place that people would congregate, congregate hang out, and hang out. I mean, I can't I can't fit a couch in my shop; it's very tiny. But people like to come in and talk about old school and just what you said. I'm from that. I I can remember how I got into buying cards was at the local. Five and you know five and ten or what have you, and go in and and buy some packs and so forth and start opening them. But also, you know, the uh, sporting news that you spoke of, that's where I really started buying my sets. I, I started buying them from Howard's Coin. I don't know if you've ever heard of them, but no. they used to be a, um, into the uh, sporting news and so forth. But it's changed. People are in it now strictly has an investment, or the kids are, and not really collecting the guys that they want and like that's, we did. And that's what's wrong. I mean, listen, you're the same way. I'm the same way. Charlie, JM. I mean, I have a collection. You have a collection. And we do pay attention to the value of the card. We do. I mean, when I had all my T206s, I did pay attention to what the card was worth. But it really, in my heart, was secondary. That was all secondary to the fact that I really loved the T206 set or the Cracker Jack set. And I think that's what's missing. Again, I use my grandson, and I love him. I love the kid. I use him as, a, as an example all of the time. Yeah. You know, Johnny, you know, he collects all the modern basketball. And he loves, he loves the game, loves the players, but he is really concerned about what the value of the card sure. is. And I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get him to change his paradigm. Right, right. but know? he's also seen you make a few bucks on cards. That's true. Well, that's, that's, <laughs> the, that's, yeah. You know what I mean? But you, you know My what I'm vintage saying? There's nothing wrong with that. You, you know, know there's nothing. In fact, it's like, it's like in life. You do a job you really like, you're probably going to end up being successful at it and make a few bucks at it. But, yeah. hey, I want to get, before we go to break, I just yeah. want to ask you guys, having talked about the love of the game and it's not about the money, <laughs> how much is that, the skyrocket value going to be of Otani now that he's in L.A.? We talk about players a lot. If this guy played in New York, if this guy played in L.A. and not Milwaukee or Kansas City, he'd, What's going to happen with him and with the Dodgers now, Charlie? You go first, Charles. If he went to Toronto, the complete opposite. He went to L.A. Now yeah. he's in a big city. He yeah. wants to win. That's why he left California. Uh, boy, I, I'm mixed between the vintage and modern. It, will, will he be the next great player? Yes. Can you compare him to Babe Ruth? Why not? And that, that's exciting. Totally. Will he be the next Babe Ruth? He may never pitch again. That's the thing. Uh, don't buy the card because you think he's going to pitch. Buy the card because you love him as a player. Right. He steals bases. He, can, he has thrown, hits home runs. He's passionate about the game, and he wants to win. And you saw the deal he did. He oh. wants to win. Yeah. And I think that's important. His, his stuff is, is definitely hot, and, and going to the Dodgers is only going to help. I See, I'm not too sure I agree with you, but with, with you guys, the reason being is what you and I spoke about before. <laughs> Babe Ruth cards, they're finite. They're a finite card. Ty Cobb is a finite card. How many millions of Otani cards are there out there? You know, I would I would say this: if he if he hits and if he comes back and pitches, if he comes back and is Babe Ruth, okay, yeah. and Babe Ruth, by the way, didn't really do he did both with the Red Sox, but anyway, if he comes back and does both and wins three or four World Series with the Dodgers, I think the, I think, I think short the, sky, term, the sky's the limit. I think short the sky's term, the limit. you're right. Yeah. Short term, that that'll <clears throat> skyrocket. Yeah, but I think as the years go on. There are so many out there. I'm not sure that's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's There's going to be interesting for people to get them. We are know? chatting with Charles Perino, my paisan. Charlie Sicilian? Are you a little Sicilian? You get some. Hundred percent Sicilian. Me too. Me too. That's why we get along. <laughs> oh wait, wait. What did I just do? <laughs> well, you did this. Paul Boy just in the house. We're going to take a quick break. Charlie's going to stay with us, but we're going to bring another paisan, Al Cristofoli from Love of the Game Auctions. Hang in there. We'll be right back. Break out the Wonder Bread. Christine <laughs> Auction is a family-owned and operated online auction specializing in autographed memorabilia, sports cards, coins, art, and collectibles. Since their founding in 2010, they've grown to two facilities in Phoenix, Arizona, totaling over 60,000 square feet. Jared Cavalli and an incredible staff of over 150 team members serve a very large customer base and enjoy every minute of it. By working with leading authentication companies, Pristine ensures all items are 100% authentic. In addition, third-party authenticators regularly travel to Pristine Auction to provide authentication services on-site. Pristine Auction strives to operate its business in a way that's honoring to God, their families, and their customers. With a strong focus on speed, quality, and premier customer service, 
Their mission is to be the leading online auction for every level of collector and fan. Pristine also works for Hope Sports and Identity Hoops International, traveling to Mexico to build houses for the less fortunate. Pristine Auction offers several online auction formats with thousands of auctions ending each day. For more information, go to pristineauction.com. That's Pristine Auction, the best in the business. Are you a collector looking for that rare trading card or autograph ball or photo? If so, then PB Collectibles in Newport is the place for you. PB Collectibles has graded cards, raw cards, complete sets, and wax boxes of the stars of the future, today, and from the past. We also offer a large selection of both vintage and modern cards. So whether you're looking to add to your collection or sell it, visit us at PB Collectibles, 269 Spring Street in Newport, located across from St. Mary's Church. We are your neighborhood card shop and much more. If you're a discerning collector interested in owning the most important pieces in the hobby, look no further than Leland's Auctions. The original sports auction and appraisal house, Leland's was established in 1985 by legendary pioneer founder Joshua Leland Evans. And today, President Mike Hefner carries on the tradition. From the Tom Brady card and memorabilia collection, to the famed Boston Garden auction, to high-end card auctions from every major sport. Leland's has always maintained the highest standards. Go to Leland's.com and get your bid in. That's Leland's, the hobby's leading sports auction house for four decades. It's often been said that championships are won on the practice field, and world records come only to those willing to work harder than everybody else. Heritage Auctions is the world's largest collectibles auctioneer, because we believe that becoming the best is only an invitation to the challenge of remaining the best. This requires the skills of the hobby's top experts, capable of identifying and maximizing value for our consigners. It requires the most visited website in the industry, courting a global audience of collectors over a million and a half strong. It requires a dedicated press department that expands our global reach far beyond the entrenched hobby marketplace. It's hard work, but a simple premise. Present the finest collectibles to the largest population of potential buyers, and world records will come. We invite all listeners to put the unmatched power of Heritage Auctions to work for you. Auction evaluations are always free, and our commission-based fee structure ensures that our interests are always aligned. The highest possible price for your collectibles. There will always be new world records to chase, so let's chase them together. Visit our website at ha.com and request your no-obligation review today. Hi, this is Dan from Memory Lane Auctions here to remind you that the renowned Memory Lane Collectibles Company has served as a beacon of light to the collecting community for the past several decades. Indeed, folks, it has been our utmost privilege and pleasure to provide the most enthusiastic collectors with an abundance of the finest sports cards and memorabilia for America's most coveted sports personalities via our world-class auctions. Whether you choose either a private sale transaction or the auction route, Memory Lane cordially invites you to reach out to us to maximize the value of your prized possessions. Also, it is not just sales that we pride ourselves on being the best of the rest, because if you are seeking a particular keepsake for your esteemed gathering, we will be relentless in our quest to find that special piece to fulfill your collecting dreams. So no time to wait. Reach out to us today for the purposes of capitalizing on our unparalleled marketing capabilities. Simply pick up the phone and dial 877-606-5263. That's 877-606-LANE or find us on the World Wide Web at www.memorylaneinc.com. Now is the time for your valued consignment to ultimately become another one of Memory Lane's record-setting prices. Hey, I'm Mike Petroselli. If your company is looking for the best in marketing and promotional items, you'll hit a home run with Petroselli Marketing. With over 8,000 suppliers and 650,000 imprint-ready items, we can get your company the visibility it needs to get your maximum exposure. Whether it be office promotions, wearables, automotive, sports items, and everything in between, Petroselli Marketing can do it all. Our design staff will even work with you from concept to delivery and customize your products. 
At Petroselli Marketing Group, we will get your brand in front of your audience. Contact us at info at PetroselliMKT.com or call us at 603-880-3202. That's Petroselli Marketing, where no dream is impossible. And so how does your company or organization do promotions? Imprinted products keeps your brand in front of your customers more than any other form of advertising. For the best on-time service and new ideas for your next project, give Petroselli Marketing Group a call at 800-264-4294 or email mp at petrocellimkt.com. Okay, we are back. And another, another paisan is in the house with us, Al Crisofoli, love of the game auction. You know... I got to just share something with you guys. I had the pleasure of having lunch with Al and his lovely wife in New York a couple weeks ago. You know, and I picked up the tab. Let's be honest here. I picked the tab. Yeah, up. you picked up the tab. Now, I had. So I how had, was how was your cheeseburger at McDonald's? Well, no, was that good? No, I had a. You know what I had because my body it is my temple. The same everywhere. You know? <laughs> <laughs> my you my body is my temple. So I had, I had a bowl <laughs> is of... Is that the one Jesus trashed? Or <laughs> just seeing how much he drank in his what, temple. Which temple is that? <laughs> I had a bowl of squash soup for lunch. Oh, man. Oh, that that doesn't, doesn't sound good. Yeah, now, Chris Afoli, Chris Afoli, as an appetizer, <laughs> as, an appetizer lunch. <laughs> as an appetizer, Chris Afoli orders a cheeseburger... Yep. With fries and I don't know something else. The main course, two racks of ribs. So I he's living. It's unbelievable. He, he picked up the tab. Did you say ahead yeah. of time you were getting the tab? I did. Nice work, Al. Yeah. No, <laughs> I'm kidding aside. Yeah, we had a great time. We had, I had it was such a pleasure meeting your wife. What a beautiful woman. Intelligent. Yeah. Now we know the brains behind. You know, I don't know what I did. Yeah, I, in another <laughs> life, I did something that I, I don't. You know, I'm not sure. But Al, do you know Charlie? No. Oh, Ch- Hi, Charlie. Charlie wow. from JRI Cards. Al Christopher, you love the game. You know Paul. You've met Paul. I, I don't know. Yep. But how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. All right. Listen. Let's get into it. You had one hell of a year. Let's tell us about a little recap on the love of the game auctions year and results. It was a good year. It was a record year for us, which you know we're still the little guy, but uh, but we had a uh, we had a real good year. Uh, we had a lot of record breaking prices on on rare items, uh, Negro League cards. Uh, uh, you know, ob- obviously the Herpelsheimer, uh Ruth uh, just smashed all of our expectations. It sold for over one hundred fifty thousand. Uh, we sold this year the the finest signed fifty two mantle. For uh, more than four hundred thousand, um, which set a record, we set a record for the highest price for a for a uh, Oscar Charleston card, uh, highest price for a, a Pop Lloyd card. I, I mean, it was just you know we did really well this year, and and uh, I really think that we're starting to become known as the auction house for the rare stuff that you don't see every day, and and that's yep. fine. That's what we want to do. So uh, that's exactly where we want to be. Now, where are you getting uh, some of the items from? Um, you know, one one client that you're working with, a lot of different uh, sources. Mm-hmm. Where where are they? Because you do mostly have from Tom. I think the word <laughs> <laughs> I think the word unique applies to it. Always does. You have yeah. you have stuff that you don't see a lot of other places. Yeah. What, what's it like for you in terms of who you're dealing with as clients? Well, we've got a lot of consigners. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's it's uh, you know it's interesting that that as you start to build this reputation as being that kind of an auction house, um, that's where people sort of come when they have that sort of material. And I, you know, I'll I'll never look a gift horse in the mouth. I'm so thankful to to have that reputation and to have um, you know people coming our way with rare items. I just think that that people understand we're going to spend a little bit more time with them. We're going to do a little more research, and it's going to be presented in a in a way that uh, um, you know makes it a little more interesting, rather than just you know lot number nine forty one. That you know that's a good point. That, that makes a big difference. I talk it about really, that all the time with my kids, and yeah. I, I teach at a local university, and we talk about that all the time, like that niche market and even sure. that service. That's your differentiator, and that's a yeah. great way to look at it. Ch- yeah. uh, um, uh, Charlie. Uh, is a big unopened packs guy because of his show. Do you get into unopened packs much, Al, uh, once in a while? We, we do. Um, okay. You know, we get this stuff, but not as as frequently as uh, as we would like. 
you know, there are some pretty strong resources for that stuff in the hobby. There's some auction houses that have really kind of established themselves there. And, you know, BBCE is now doing auctions. So, so that's a thing as well. And, and, uh, uh, you know, but from time to time we get, we get material that's, uh, I bought some know. from your site before. Oh, yeah. 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 We, you know, what we did have is, is uh, a gentleman about a, I don't know, a year and a half ago or so came in, um, with a, with a whole collection. Uh, and he started uh, opening packs in 1959 and continued building sets, all four sports, um, until about the 80s. And then he got sick of opening the boxes, but he kept buying them. So a lot of the modern boxes that you see in our auction, they all came from that one collection. And we're, and we're slowly just working our way through it. And it's been a lot of fun. We don't um, we don't get a lot of modern stuff, and so it, it's been a lot of learning. You know what is what is this stuff, and and what makes it interesting. Al, and if you I, ever need Pokemon advice, just ask me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did discuss. We did make a conscious decision when when that stuff started to run up um, during the pandemic that we were going to just kind of stay away from it. Yeah, it's God. not good. Zap, you know, Zap's an expert on Pokemon and local breads. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, he, he didn't hear that. It's kind of a uh, passion for him. Al, <laughs> well, when, when we were having lunch, you and I were, you and I were discussing uh, your niche, as, as, as uh, JM mentioned, in the market. And you really do have a unique niche in the market because you're not heritage, you're not golden auctions, you're not mile high, not, I'm sorry, you're not uh, uh, Leland's. However, you're not the smaller auction houses either. You're kind of like... Yeah. A, a niche guy in the middle that appeals to the guy that can't spend a million dollars, but the guy that doesn't want to spend a hundred dollars. You know what I mean? It's, I, it's a great you know, niche. I think, I think we have the customers for both. And, and you know, but, Sounds- but uh, you know, I think what it comes down to for us is, is um, you know, it's a, it's a nice niche in, in this, you know, 10 to a hundred thousand dollar area where, you know, a lot of the bigger auction houses, they can't spend time marketing that stuff. Right. And, and uh, you know, we know what it is. We have the bidders for it. And we can spend the time marketing this stuff. So that's, you know, that's great. Hey, does that card, uh, you see this? I, I've seen that guy. See this See this card? <laughs> yeah. Nice card, isn't it? Very. Good. Just, Very. Just thought I'd uh, let you know. That's uh, P.O. Box 3931. <laughs> 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 it's a dollar off every loaf of Wonder Bread. You guys can make all the fun you want of Wonder gonna, Bread. It's not healthy. It's gonna, right? It is not healthy. He's going to throw in a jar of fluff, too, with that. Also, you get that. <laughs> you know, can I get, speaking of uh, speaking of rare things and things you don't see every day. We have day, about two and a half a, minutes. Uh, I published a, an entry on, on the Love of the Game Auctions blog this week. Yeah. Um, about the standard catalog. Tom, this is something that you and I talked about a little bit while we were eating. Yeah. Uh, well, mostly my mouth was full, so you probably didn't understand <laughs> he, what he I was He was saying. sipping his squash but, but, soup uh, at the time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, great. the standard catalog hasn't been published since 2017. And and uh, that has always been the resource that, that hobbyists use to uh, to find what are the new newly discovered variations, what are sets, totally. you know, new information yep. about sets. So if you were a collector and you discovered some new variation or discovered some interesting thing about a set that had not, never been known before, you would report it to the standard catalog, and every year that they would, uh, um, you know, they would go through and and determine whether or not this was a legitimate thing, and then they would they would. Uh, um, make changes so that the next year's catalog would reflect all of those changes. Standard catalog has not been published since 2017 and there is no real place to report those variations. One of the things that we talked about is, is is those Herpelsheimer cards in our last auction where with the discoveries that we made this year, everything that's in that last standard catalog about the Herpelsheimers is all wrong now. Yeah. And there's no place to report well, it. Well, so JM, we, JM is going to write it. He's going to he's going to pick up the. Yeah. That's a yeah. good project for you. Well, yeah. well one of, one of the things that I you know I put put forth in the blog this week was that the uh, the Saber uh, Baseball Cards Committee is is the perfect organization. To, to take this. And so we're kind of calling on whoever it is that owns the standard catalog now to either publish it or donate the, the rights and the assets we, to we'll, Sabre so that they can publish it. We will follow up with that. We're just about out of time. Al, your auction site. 
Uh, love of the game auctions.com. Charles, your auction, your, your website. I love that name. Love of the game. You can't ask for anything better than that. Love <laughs> of the game. Our site is JRI cards, which stands for just rip it. JRI cards.com. Uh, we have a veteran section up there for a charity, and we got a lot of the packs. You may see an Alice catalog may pop on our site, and we're going to open and it. And <laughs> PB, <laughs> pbcollectibles.com. pbcollectibles.com. With that being said, Al, as always, thanks so much for coming on. Chaz, Happy we love holidays, you. Everybody. Charlie, look forward Happy to seeing holidays. you in, Palm Be- in West Palm Beach. Good to see Paul, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. And to our viewers and listeners, Chrissy, great. great job. <laughs> we love you, guy. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. But yeah, Merry Christmas. It's coming up. Take care. Happy collecting. Take care, guys. <laughs>